Hello everyone, welcome back to another tutorial. Uh, this tutorial is based on a question raised by one of the subscribers asking what happens to the shear force and bending moment diagrams when the beam is subjected to a concentrated moment. So let's do an example and see how it goes. If I have this beam, a uh, simply supported beam with a concentrated moment at the mid span, so how, how do we solve this beam? Basically we follow the same steps the summation of the forces in the x should equal to zero, the summation of the forces in the y should equal to zero, and the summation of the moment about a point along the beam should equal to zero. First, let's assume the direction of the reactions. I'm just assuming Ay to be upward and By to be upward. So if I do the first equation, which is the summation in the forces in the y direction, and set that equals to zero, I will get Ay plus by equals to zero. I'm not doing the summation of the forces in the x since there are no forces acting in the x direction on the beam. So let's jump directly to the moment equation. The summation of the moments about point A or the hinge should equal to zero and I'm assuming the counterclockwise to be a positive moment. So what do we have? We have 10 multiplied by by minus the 50, which is the concentrated moment at the mid-span, and I'll set this equals to zero. If I solve for by, I'll get 5 kips. Now I substitute the 5 again in the ay plus by equation and solve for ay to get minus 5 kips. Okay, what does the minus sign say here? It basically says that the direction I assumed for ay was wrong. It doesn't say the value is wrong, it's just the direction. So the correct direction should be downwards and by is not affected. We will try to uh, do it the long way. I mean by the long way is taking some sections through the beam. So I'll take two sections. Section at point C which is at a point between A and the mid-span and the second section I'll take it at D which is at a point between the mid-span and support B. So for the first section for X less than 5 foot or 5 feet I'll do the summation of the forces on this section and I'll get minus 5 plus minus VC equals to 0 and if I solve for VC I'll get minus 5 kips. Now if I take the summation of the moments about point C I'll do MC plus 5 times X and the plus sign here is because the 5X equation is a result of a moment that is acting counterclockwise. So if I solve for MC I'll get negative 5X. Now for the second section, section D, I'll follow the same steps exactly so I do the summation of the forces in the y direction and set that equals to zero. I'll have minus 5 plus minus VD equals to zero and I'll get VD equals minus 5 again and if I do the summation of the moments about D I'll get MD minus 50 which is the concentrated moment plus 5X equals to zero and if I solve for MD I'll get an equation that is, that is equal to 50 minus 5x. Okay so this is the beam. Now for the segment between 0 and 5 or the segment between A and the uh, point where the concentrated moment is acting I have VC equals minus 5. So if I try to dr start drawing the shear diagram first what I can do now I'll go minus 5 kips downwards because it's a minus sign then I'll ask myself this question what about the section or what about the shear value at the section D at section D I got minus 5 again so the shear diagram basically should go in a straight line maintaining the same value of minus 5 then this minus 5 here which is this value will close the shear diagram okay and again this minus 5 is basically if I look 
at it in another way it's basically the reaction at B that is pushing my value from minus 5 all the way to 0 because the reaction at B is plus 5 now let's take a look at the moment diagram so MC or the moment at C is described by this equation minus 5x just pick any numbers between 0 and 5 you start with a 0 x equals to 0 so you'll get MC equals to 0 and if you jump all the way to 5 you'll get minus 25 so it would look something like this this is the graph of the equation minus 5x between 0 and 5 now what about the second part 50 minus 5x now you can substitute any value starting with 5 ending with 10 which is the length of the beam uh, if you want to make sure just start with 10 at the beginning so you you know for sure that the moment at the reaction uh, I'm sorry the moment at the support B should equal to 0 so if I substitute 10 into this equation I'll get 50 minus 5 times 10 which is another 50 I'll get a 0 so what if I substitute 5 so 50 minus 5 times 5 25 so I'll get 25 so at the mid span I'll have a value of 25 and the end of the span I'll have a value of 0 so the line will look something like this now here's the minus 25 and here's the plus 25 all I have to do is just connect these two lines and again the area below the beam line is the negative moment and the other area is the positive moment so what do we, what do we learn here okay if a concentrated clockwise remember this if it's a clockwise bending moment was a, encountered on a beam or was applied on a beam I add it to the value of the moment before it okay so clockwise you add counterclockwise you subtract so this is our shortcut and when we are drawing the shear and bending moment diagrams instead of taking sections let's take a look at the second example it's a, a little bit more complicated example but I believe this example should clarify the whole procedure okay I made it looks uh, look really uh, scary if you look at it but it's a very very simple example to do now I don't want to go through the reaction finding part of the tutorial this is something you should do on your own but if you do it you'll get these two reactions which are the reaction at A is 47.5 kilonewton and the reaction at B should be 52.5 kilonewton let's jump directly into drawing the shear force and bending moment diagram the lines you see on the screen right now are the important lines that I need to take care of when drawing either the shear force diagram or the bending moment diagram so this is the line I'm gonna start with that's the our beam or the x-axis if you want to call it first I'll jump a value of 47.5 which is the reaction then I go to the right all the way to the point where the force 50 kilonewtons is acting and you notice that the uh, 10 kilonewtons meter moment doesn't affect my shear diagram so this 50 kilonewton what it does it brings down my shear diagram to a value from positive 47.5 to a negative 2.5 so ex what I did here is 47.5 minus the 50 because the 50 is going downward so I end up at negative 2.5 then again I go all the way to the next 50 skipping the concentrated moment at the mid span and subtract another 5 or add minus 50 and I'll end up having this shape so the value here should be you guessed it minus 52.5 okay that's the easiest way or the quick, quickest way of doing the problem now the trickiest part of this problem is doing the moment diagram but again remember if we follow the rules we've been I've been advocating in my tutorials 
you will be able to do this problem with ease. So starting with the zero, I calculate the area under the shear diagram up to the concentrated moment. The area is 190. So the I know for sure it's going to be a straight line because the shear diagram is a horizontal line. If it's if the shear diagram was inclined, like decreasing or increasing, then I'll have a parabolic shape for the moment diagram. But since the shear diagram is a horizontal line, I know the moment diagram should be a straight line going up in this case because the area under the shear diagram is positive. So the value at this point is 190, which is basically the area under the shear diagram up to this point starting from the very left of the beam. Now we are encountering the 10 kN. Remember, what do we do now? It's a clockwise concentrated moment. So all we have to do is add it to the previous value of the moment. What, what is the previous value we have? It's 190. So if we add 10, we jump to 200. So that's the way to do it. Again, just continue. Now you have an area of 95 here. Again, it's a positive area, so you have a straight line. And what you do is you add this 95 to the previous value of the moment, which is the 200. I want to go back to the 190. I'm following the exact same logic for all the points. But for the 190, we directly put the value of the area onto the point but we didn't mention anything about adding it to any previous area. We did add it because the previous area was zero which is the starting point of the beam so if you add 190 so the answer is 190 plus zero which is 100, basically 190. Now if I want to add 95 to the previous point which is 200 you guess it's 295. Okay I'll, I'll keep going now I'm encountering a negative moment or sorry I'm encountering a negative value under or a negative area under the shear diagram what I do I add this algebraically to the 295 or basically subtract 5 from the 295 and I'll get a value of 290 and I jump now let me take this back so it's going to be clear. Now I'm encountering the 20 kilo newton meter moment. It's a count. It's a clockwise moment. So basically, I add it to the previous value of the moments. What is my previous value? It's 290. I add the 20, so it's 310. Now I have a negative area, minus 5 add it to the 310 and you'll get 305 you have a negative area of minus 100 minus 105 and you add it to the 305 you'll get 200 and now I'm encountering another concentrated moment with a value of 10 and what I do now again just if it's counter if it's clockwise add it directly to the value of the previous moment which is 200 so 200 plus uh, 10 should give me 210 now we know that the value of the moment at the very end should equal to 0 another checkpoint for you guys here the area under the last segment of the shear diagram should equal the magnitude of the moment you got the last moment you got which is 210 but with a negative sign so if you add the for example 210 to the negative 210 which is the area under the shear diagram you'll end up with a zero so if you do the math four times the negative 52.5 you will get minus 210 if you add it to the 210 it will close down your sh uh, moment diagram Okay, uh, I hope that clarifies the issue and I'll see you guys in other tutorials. Thank you.